and welcome to Economy and Markets TV, where we have conversations with a purpose. I'm Dave Okenquist, Senior Research Analyst here at Dent. Today, we're going to take you around the world of economic and financial news, which means I bring on boom and bust senior editor and co-founder of Dent Research, Mr. Rodney Johnson. Rodney, good morning. Hey, Dave. Normally, we do this every Friday, but of course, we have the holiday coming up tomorrow, so we're going to get ahead of that a little bit and make sure you guys get all the most important information of the week right here before you head off to Thanksgiving. So uh, with that, let's just get started, Rodney. The big thing I think that came out was equity markets rolling over mostly yesterday. Uh, the Dow's down about 800 points from last Friday. Uh, earnings came in, as you said in the copy today, just sort of okay, nothing great. So what's, what's weighing on markets, Rodney? Uh, it's the big game of what's next, right? Everybody's talking about this. And as you know, you and I have said now for weeks, we've been talking about this thing for months. Uh, most of the year since tax reform is that's great for the year, but then what, right? And so people are looking not necessarily at earnings and saying, yeah, they were okay. But the guidance, the forward guidance about fourth quarter and even next year is, is murky. People are saying, we don't really know what it's going to look like. And so uh, you've seen companies kind of pull back a little bit in another report, CapEx spending was down some. And so people are saying, look, we just don't know what comes next. And so they're taking some money off the table and saying, we don't want to risk it. The trade deal's gone on too long without a deal. And yep. so people just aren't feeling right. And then you've got the Fed back there. I know that we'll talk about that eventually, but you're just looking at this and people are saying, yeah, the economy's doing okay, but the market seems high. And so people aren't finding a good reason to drive prices higher. And so they're looking around and asking, why are prices this high? And they're finding reasons to take it lower. Yeah, so do you, we just had the election not that long ago. There was some idea that if the Republicans sort of held on, that would be good for the markets. And uh, of course, we had the split result there with the Democrats taking the House, an idea that, is there anything in there in those election results and looking forward to what that might do to upset markets? Or is that not even a, a thing? No, I think there's something in there because we got the tax reform because the Republicans controlled both houses and the White House. And so I don't think that would have happened with a split Congress. Uh, Trump had mentioned perhaps more tax reform. Was that just, you know, throwing something out there? Nobody knows. I don't know. But I do know that he won't get anything of note passed, uh, economically speaking, uh, in the current Congress or the one coming in in January. And so I think there's something to that. Plus, any more that he wanted to do to roll back regulation or more business friendly things that required an action by Congress, you can pretty much kiss that off as well. And so there's definitely something to it in terms of, you know, kind of calling a halt to what was going on in terms of business friendly policies. So, yeah, yeah. does that make it just that much worse? You bet. Absolutely. Now, I didn't mention at the top, but if Rodney hits two minutes like he just did, I will ding this bell so we can keep everything going. One last thing. I do want to extend this just real quick. Um, holiday shopping, that's coming up quickly. And with the markets being so jittery, um, does it put a lot of importance on what the results will be coming up uh, that we're going to get in the next week or two on Black Friday and all that? I think it does. And I think that investors are a little bit mismatched with the market. If you look at what's going on, you know, outside, you know, get outside of the bubble, take your eyes off the screen, go walk through a mall, jam packed, right? Amazon is making money hand over fist. People are spending cash. People have a little bit more money in their wallets because of tax reform. So low unemployment, a little bit better pay. I think you're going to see fairly good holiday results. I think we're at 4% plus in terms of holiday sales. I think by the time you get some numbers out Friday, Monday, things will look a little better. There's a little worry about weather in the Northeast keeping people indoors. But you know what? They're going to spend it online if they're not spending right. it in the store. So it's still going to get spent. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Rodney. Let's move to real estate. Uh, existing home sales came up. 1.4% for October, but down 5.1% for the year, which is the biggest yeah. yearly decline since 2014. Uh, prices, medium prices still are up a little bit here, although that feels like that's slowing. They were up 3.8%. On the other hand, we had housing starts, which were uh, up 1.5% in October, and then down nearly 3% for the year. Permits fell, and of course, as we hinted at, um, the thing, big thing looming for real estate are rising mortgage rates, which everyone's looking at the Fed like, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> You're yeah. wrecking this industry. So what's going on with real estate, Rodney? Uh, it's exactly what we talked about again, right? You, you do have people uh, keeping a little bit more money, but it's not like wages have been running up dramatically. As a matter of fact, they're barely keeping pace with inflation now or just slightly ahead, whereas home prices have been moving up pretty good. And so we're finally seeing home prices slow down as people look around and go, I just can't buy that. You know, yeah. I, I just can't afford that because prices have run so far ahead of wages. And then you're looking at the Fed coming in and raising rates, which has moved mortgages up near 5%. That's a long way from 3.75. 
And so what you could afford a year ago, you cannot afford today. And so it definitely takes some wind out of it. I mean, it did take a number of Fed moves to get to this point, but we are there. And, and going back to what we talked about with stock prices, everybody's looking back and going, hey, wait a second, Federal Reserve, you know that you're kind of the culprit here taking the wind out of some of this. What are you going to do about it? And so that becomes the chicken and egg question. If you're looking at a mortgage right now, maybe you wait until late December after the Fed meeting to see if they don't raise rates or raise rates and then call a, you know, a hiatus for a while, and then maybe mortgage rates come back down. So I think you got a lot of people saying, wait a second, it just got past me. I'm going to wait and see what happens, maybe do something in the next year. Yeah, sort of wait on the sidelines. Now, housing yep. starts, that's not a big deal. We talk about uh, the new home market, how the... Construction, they've sort of managed their, their inventory and all that, but the, really the big deal is existing home sales. So you, you, do, you yeah. expect people waiting maybe for spring, summer to really make their move? I think they're waiting on the Fed to do something or to see if prices roll over pretty good. I mean, we're, we're actually moving into that place where um, you get that savings trap, right? That liquidity trap where yeah. if prices have gone down a little bit, you wait to buy to see if they'll fall further. And the longer you wait and everybody else waits, so they do fall further, but it ends up hurting the overall economy. I think that might be playing out writ small in the real estate market where people go, wait a second, prices actually lowered a little bit. Maybe I just kind of stand pat and see what mm -hmm. happens. And so I, I do think we have some of that going on. And as you mentioned, existing home sales are 90% plus of the market. They are the 800 pound gorilla. New home starts, housing starts. That's interesting in terms of a supply issue. But as we have seen since the downturn, the home builders have been very good at managing their inventory. Yeah, absolutely. A little bit of personal info here. I've been one of those people that's been waiting. And as I've been waiting, I've been seeing prices just go up and up and up. So, yes, I'm still waiting and we'll see what happens here. <laughs> it is regional, right? It is regional. Yeah, in my area, it just sort of uh, took off a bit. But uh, anyways, yes, I will be waiting. <laughs> the last item we got, Rodney, are cryptocurrencies. They took a hit this week. All of them really were down. Uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, EOS. Bitcoin, uh, last check before we started, Rodney, was about 4500 bucks. And it was sitting at 6,500 about two weeks ago. Uh, weeks yep. ago, and of course, it uh, also hit 20,000 at one point, right? So, <laughs> what's going on with cryptocurrencies? Are they are they are they worried about the Fed uh, raising rates, Rodney? Is this what this is about? <laughs> no, no, I can guarantee that nobody in the crypto world is worried about the Fed raising rates. It, it, it's that nobody in the crypto world is worried about anything, right? Because yeah. nobody's joining them. It's a uh, it's becoming something of a tempest in a teapot where you don't hear about it anymore. The SEC cracked down on some of these coin offerings. You had other legal issues with you know, some of these coin offerings. You had really big thefts. And when I say really mean, big, I mean hundreds of millions of dollars stolen. Wow. And people are realizing, in short order, these things are hard to use. I mean, it's just, it's crazy what you have to go through in terms of the hoops you have to jump through to get your funds to a place where you can actually exchange them with somebody else for a good or service. It's like, that sounds okay. How about a dollar? Let me use the dollar. It works. Uh, so <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't begrudge the idea of them, but the reality of them is they're very difficult. While they were going up, they certainly had this fantastical gambling quality to them. They've been going down, so the people that marginally might have been interested are like not a chance. So. Yeah. That's something you mentioned, I think you hinted at in the copy, was that the loudest or the biggest cheerleaders are those with the biggest holdings. <laughs> yes, they, they in the business, it's called talking your book. And these people aren't talking their book. They are desperately screaming their book because yeah. they watch their fortunes, you know, get cut by almost 80 percent now. Don't you understand? This is the future and I'm going to benefit from that future. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, such is life, right? All right, well, that's all I had for this week, Rodney. Looking ahead to next week, we're going to have U.S. home price index, new home sales, something that we mentioned is maybe not that big of a mover, but something sort of, certainly to keep an eye on. We'll get minutes from the last Fed meeting. And as, of course, as we talked about, we're going to get some results, early results from Black Friday and then uh, Cyber Monday. Yeah. Uh, as I mentioned, I, I may brave the crowds, although the item I was going to buy will be available online tonight. So I may just do that. Exactly. <laughs> uh, anything else you have your eye on, Rodney? A couple of things, and we've talked about the Fed. The next Fed meeting is later in December, but this is going to be a, a steady, you know, drumbeat. It's going to get louder if people kind of talking to the Fed saying, hey, either one, don't raise rates, or two, raise rates, but give a clear indication that you're going to hold off from future rate moves until you see 
a better landscape, but it's all about the market. I mean, because mm-hmm. the economy's doing okay, right? I mean, uh, we expect growth to slow from 4% to, you know, something less in the twos, but that's kind of normal for a year. It's all about the stock market because unemployment is, is very low. And so if we get something like that, I think it does give kind of a boost to the markets there in December. And then there's oil. I mean, oil is down in the low 50s, uh, very low number. It's hurting a lot of oil companies. Uh, but again, I expect something to happen. I think the Saudis are going to meet with their co-conspirators in early December and say, hey, wait a second, let's cut some of the supply. And I think you'll see oil pop in December. Absolutely. I know you always have your eye on energy, so I appreciate that. And uh, I also I think I saw the, the president today thank Saudi Arabia for giving a tax cut to middle Americans for uh, the low oil prices. What do you make of that? <laughs> uh, he did indeed, because they did not uh, call for supply cuts yet. But, you know, give them 10 days. I think they will. And I think he'll have some words for them at that point that won't be as nice. OK, well, we'll all be waiting for that. <laughs> thank you for joining me, Rodney. We will see you all next week. And if you've got any questions, comments, any just general feedback, send those to tv at economyandmarkets.com. And we'll catch you next Friday.